Hey, Into Pickers, Tony coming to you today from McMullen uh, Center here in Clearwater, Florida. What I want to talk to you about today is about finding places to play the game. Here at McMullen, we have six courts, so you can see behind me, you can see folks playing on those two courts, and, and there's two courts over here. And then closer to me over here, you can see there's a net set up on this court. So these blue lines on this side of the tennis court, and then on the other side of the tennis court, there's another pickleball court that looks exactly the same. If you have these kind of facilities and you have access to a temporary net like this one up here, perfect, you can play on these courts. That's the best place to play. If you have dedicated courts, so uh, courts that are made specifically for pickleball, and those are available to you, play on those. Those are even better to play on. But what happens if all you have in your community or, in, or, or where you live are tennis courts? So all you have are tennis courts that do not have these kind of markings on them. What I want to talk to you about today is how you can use those tennis courts to play pickleball. So let's get into it. So here we are in a tennis court that has no, no pickleball line. So you can see it's just a regular tennis court. You can see on the other side, it's just marked as a regular tennis court. It has no pickleball lines on it. You can play pickleball on this court. All you're gonna need is you're gonna need a few cones. You can use this type of cone. We'll talk about the advantages of each. This type of cone is a little flatter, or you can use these kind of, uh, they're like vinyl strips that basically you lay on the court uh, to temporarily mark the court so you can play pickleball. I'll link to each one of these below so you can find them on our store. If you wanna purchase them there, you're welcome to. It helps support uh, our efforts to bring you information uh, and uh, anyway so I'll link to those below what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these to basically mark off a pickleball court using the, the service line that's already here we're gonna mark a few lines on the side and then uh, a kitchen line and you'll be ready to play some pickleball I want to be clear we don't recommend either permanently or semi-permanently marking any courts unless you have permission to do so. So like, for instance, you may think, well, I can use chalk and I can mark it with chalk. Problem with chalk is chalk is semi-permanent because it should wash off eventually. Uh, and it, but if you don't have permission of the owner of the court or the manager of the court or the city, whoever is in charge of the court, uh, you could run into a problem doing that. Um, we also don't recommend using any kind of uh, tape or anything like that. Again, unless you have the permission of the tennis courts, either owner, manager, whoever's in charge of that court. So make sure you have that before you do anything permanent. Using cones and these kind of strips won't leave any kind of marks on the court, so you won't have any problem using them. And you, if you don't have cones, by the way, you don't need cones. You can use water bottles. You can use pretty much anything that can help de delineate a line. Uh, and I'll talk about later on, I'll talk a little bit about line calling under this kind of uh, situation where you just basically have a few marks on the court uh, and how you should uh, uh, line call, what our recommendations are for line calling. So let me show you how to do this now. To play pickleball on a tennis court, what we're going to use, what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the, this service area. The service area on a tennis court is very similar to the size of a pickleball court. The distance between this line on this side of this, uh, this service line on this side and the service line on the other side is 42 feet. A pickleball court is 44 feet, so you basically have a one foot difference on either side. Our recommendation is not to mark this off another foot. The foot difference here should not have a significant impact on your game. And in fact, if you practice on this kind of court and then you go play on a, on a regulation pickleball court, you'll have an advantage because you'll be used to playing with another foot of margin as you play the game on a regulation court. So we, we recommend using the actual line that's already on the tennis court uh, as the baseline or the back line of your pickleball court. The center line on the service box is gonna be the center line of your pickleball court. A pickleball court has a center line just like a tennis court, so we're gonna use this line so you don't have to do anything with this line, and that'll work out perfectly. The distance between the center line and the singles outline here, so this line here, that's the singles line, is 13 and a half feet. A pickleball court regulation, a regulation pickleball court distance between the center line and the out of bounds line is 10 feet. So there's two options that you can use here. Our recommendation, if you have enough cones and, or strips as markers, what you will do is you'll just, you'll basically mark off three and a half feet. The way I do it, it's just a rough number. So it's basically one, two, three. I can put a marker here, it's perfectly fine. Or I can get another half foot if I want to. And then put a cone right there. So that's one mark on my court. What I recommend is that when you're marking off the court, whoever's doing the marking with their feet, it'd be the same person or someone with a roughly similar size. So if you have two people have size, you know, 11 feet, they can mark it, but don't have like an 11 and a seven mark because it'll be vastly different. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna basically mark this one off. I'm gonna mark one off at the, at the baseline here. Three and a half. And then I'm gonna put one somewhere up here. I haven't marked off the no volley zone yet, but I'm gonna ballpark it's here-ish, so I'm gonna mark it here. Three 
All right, so this will be one sideline, and then I'll do the same on the other side. Now, what I want to do next is I want to, I need to mark my no volley zone or kitchen line. The kitchen or the no volley zone is what makes pickleball pickleball. So this is really the only line that you absolutely need to have in addition to the service line you're going to use. And I'll explain that in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark off seven feet from the net. Again, these are approximations, so don't stress about it. If you want to bring out a tape measure, that's fine. Three and a half and seven, that'll give you the number. Otherwise, just mark it off with your feet. Okay, so I was a little bit off on this one. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. And this basically will be my kitchen line. And then I can take this one and I can center it off a little better between these two, roughly like this. I think that's reasonable there. And so, a little windy today. Uh, so that's another reason to use the strips, by the way. The strips won't push these cones out of position. So you'll, you can see what I did here. I would do the same thing on the other side. Uh, and then I would have basically a pickleball court. So the pickleball court, oh, the only other thing I would do is I would take one cone, and put it here on the center line if you want to so you can see the kitchen line better. So if you're standing on this side or on that side, you can kind of see it better. And again, we'll talk about line calling in a second and how to deal with that on this type of court. But this is a way to really start getting playing pickleball and that's why I wanted to bring it to you. So you would mark the no volley, you'd mark your sideline on that side, your sideline on this side, and you're ready to play pickleball. You use this as your, as your uh, end line, serve from here and just start playing. Another option, if you don't want to have to mark off the sidelines, you can use the sidelines on the singles courts. Just understand that it makes the court a, a pretty much bigger. It's 30% bigger on either side, 35% bigger on either side. So if you're physically able to do it and want to get a little more exercise and want to use the whole, uh, the whole area, that's fine. One last thing before you start playing is the net. A regulation tennis net in the center here is going to be 36 inches. So this is 36 inches here. You're, you want your net to be 34 inches. So what I would do the first time I came out is probably being a measuring tape just so I know how far to pull the strap over. But usually if you pull the strap over just a little bit like this, maybe a little bit more, that should usually pull it down enough to where you have 34 inches in the middle. That's what you're looking for. The, uh, when you're done playing, just remember to put the strap back like this. Put the strap back in the middle because uh, obviously tennis players need it at this height to play tennis and there's a there's a steel cable in here you don't want it to lose tension by pulling it down that'll affect the tennis players it also affect you as a pickleball player uh, because you lose tension in this net so to keep the tension just bring it back to the middle uh, the other thing that's kind of related to that is we don't recommend making any alterations to the strap you'll see on here that this strap is is uh, a lot of times they're adjustable so they have like a, a, a grommet or something you can adjust them on don't adjust them just to play pickleball just take them and slide them over and you'll be fine to play. If you're playing with cones or water bottles or something like that and a ball hits one of these objects, so the cone or the water bottle, something like that, and, and, or the water bottle or the cone gets in the way of your movement, just call a redo or we call let in the game. Uh, so again, if, if this becomes a, a, an impediment to whatever point you're playing, just call a redo and just uh, or call a let and replay the point. Now we marked up the court, I'm going to show you how we play a little bit on it. Uh, on line calls, what I want you to do here is just give the benefit of the doubt to the other team. So if you're not sure if that ball's in or out here, just call it in and keep on playing. The point here is to keep on playing the game and if the ball's clearly out, then call it out. If your facilities provide you a tennis court that you can play on, whether it has, sometimes tennis courts have markings here to play or with no markings, you're gonna mark it on your own with the strips or the cones or whatever you choose to use. Our friend Ernie uh, uh, created this product called ConvertiNet. Uh, you can find it on our website, I'll link to it below. It has everything you need inside here to make the net a little more formal, in other, or to bring it down a little more formally, so it has some straps, so you bring the, ends, the edges down a little bit, and it helps you bring the middle down to the regulation height 
Uh, it's a really nice product. Uh, you know, once you get used to putting it up, it shouldn't take too long to pop it up there when you want to play. Uh, and it just helps give you a maybe a more fuller um, game uh, as you start getting more serious into the game. So consider the converter net. I'll link to it below.